In this video, you will learn how to solve a multi-objective optimization problem by using the weighted sum approach. We run a multi-objective optimization algorithm, and the problem is a bar truss configuration with two non-conflicting objectives. Our objectives are minimizing the displacements of two nodes under loads. The algorithm we will use is called MOGA, which uses a weighted sum approach, while the weights are adopted during the optimization run. So now let's look at the problem. Here in this figure, you will see a truss consisting of 15 different bars. The bars are numbered in uh, black and the truss is under two loads. See on the top, on top of nodes seven and eight, F1 and F2. Our aim in this exercise is to find the initial configurations of node 6 through 9. That means we want to find the initial height of nodes 6, 7, 8, and 9. What's the aim of, which is our objective, of minimizing the displacements of nodes 7 and 8, which are under loads F1 and F2. The solver we are going to use in this exercise is a JITON script. So now let's look at Mode Frontier. So in Mode Frontier, we start with a blank project. Let's save it as Trust 15. For to create our workflow project for optimization problem, as we know, we need input nodes, we need output nodes, and we need a solver node to connect these two nodes. But let's see how many input nodes and how many output nodes we, do we need. So if we go back to uh, the problem simplification, we know that the input variables are the heights of node 6, 7, 8, and 9. So that means we have four input variables and our objective is minimizing the displacement of, of nodes 7 and 8, which means we have two output variables. So let's create these variables or nodes in mode frontier. So let's name our input nodes at node y pos 6. That means that the position, y position of node 6 and the format will be 0, 0, 0. The lower value 1.5 and an upper, upper bound of the problem for this variable is 2.5. Let's put the base Two one zero zero one. So we create the other three variable by just simply copy and pasting this first variable. We created the four variables: node y position six, seven, eight, and nine. And as we said, we need two output variables. So let's search for output nodes. And let us name it y displacement of node 7 and simply by copy and pasting this we'll have the variable the output variable for y displacement of node 8 so now we need a solver as i said our solver here in this problem is a jiton code so if we search for a jiton here we have it so I already made a Jiton code of this problem ready for you. So you just can, let's search for it and insert the Jiton code here. So here's the Jiton code. So it's basically, if you look at here at the um, script, so it's basically an FEM solver uh, coded in Jiton. So let's connect the variables. Let's go back here and go to edit Jiton. So we see here that input data is node y position six to nine and the output data y displacement node to seven to eight. So if we want to link these input nodes and output nodes to our Jiton code, we have to uh, see the names. So if we go down here, you see that the input nodes here in the script are called yp six to nine and the output nodes are called y UY7 and UY8. So if we go here in our table, we have to change this names based on what we have in our uh, Jiton script. So I will change the input variables to YP6 
to YP9 and the output variables to U, Y7 and 8. So that's what we have in, that's how the variables, the input and output variables are named in Jiton code. So I changed all the variable names according to the Jiton code. So now node Y position 6 is linked to YP6 as input and output, for example, Y displayed node 7 is linked to UY7. So now what do we need is objective nodes. So let's have two objective nodes. And we have to go to setting and change setting the objectives to minimization. And also the expression, we have to change the expression of uh, the objectives because it doesn't matter if the displacement of Y is in negative direction or positive direction. So in order to fulfill this requirement, we change the expression of the objective to absolute values. So I changed this one. And let's change, create the second objective, connect it to the output variable, change it to minimization, and change expression to absolute value. So now we have our objectives. The only thing remaining is our scheduling node. Let's search for a scheduling node. We do have a scheduling node here. We connect it to our Joyton, and let's go to the settings. So first we select our algorithm. We're going to use a MOGA2 algorithm. And we change it to manual setting. And here let's go to the category. We're going to categorize the generations and Let's have 50 function evaluation for this one. So let's create our DOEs. We need to create a DOE table. We will use the same Latin hyper, uniform Latin hypercube with 16 designs. Let's create the DOE table. Here we have 16 design created. So the only thing left here is the logic end. So if we run, create our logic end, our workflow is now complete. There is no error and we can start running the project. So let's run the project and wait for the results. We have to save it again. Mode Frontier is now finished to run and we can analyze our results. In this video, we are going to look at a new tool, which is a chart, a new chart, and it is called bubble chart. So let's look at bubble chart. Bubble chart is basically a scatter chart, a 2D scatter chart with a third quantity added to display as a color gradient of the bubbles. This is very useful for monitoring the progress of our optimization. So let's monitor our, the progress of our objectives, which are objective 8 and 9, selected as X axis and Y axis of the bubble chart and the design ID as the color. Let's look at the chart. So here you will see how the solutions converge to the final optimal solutions by changing the color. So the blue colors, the blue circles show the initial design IDs and the color ball will show you how the solution evolved through generations of our optimization algorithm. And finally, the red solutions will tell you the final optimal solution. Now let's create a chart, history chart. We already know how to create that. So chart, history, and history of one of the objectives. So if we look at the chart, we see that this diagram is actually of limited use here. We can't get much useful information from this chart. Therefore, we can create another chart, which is the new one we haven't learned before, and that is called parallel coordinates plot. Let's add this, select all the variables and all the objectives. Every line in this diagram is a design that can be filtered by dragging uh, the gray bounds on each variable and objective. For example, we can filter out the large displacements and focus on the feasible designs only. 
whereas our aim in this problem was to minimize the objective so we can find uh, the lower values of the objectives by dragging the upper bound of objective 8 and objective 9. So these are the designs that are feasible and you can see the values for objective 9 here shown by different colors. If you click on objective 8, you will see the values of objective 8 and the lines related to that and the corresponding values for the variables. Let's look at the table and see how can we import some data from the tables. Let us select the optimal value from the table. We select designs, Pareto design and only real. And if we go to the charts, we see that the real optimal values are selected in all the charts. The design table contains all the data from the optimization run of our project. Let's click on the design table, right click and mark designs which are optimal solutions. So we go to mark designs, mark Pareto designs and mark real Pareto designs. We can right click again and we can select designs which are marked. So that's basically we are selecting the real Pareto designs of our entire design solutions. Now if we go back to all the charts, we see that the Pareto designs are marked or highlighted in green. If you look at the parallel coordinate, we see some interesting findings. We see that the position of optimal solutions for nodes 7 and 8 are within the higher bound of the limits, while node 6 and node 9 are very close to the lower bound of the variable. Let's go back to the design table. We already know that the optimal solutions are selected and marked, and let's create a table from the marked designs. When we name this table um, Pareto Designs and we want to only export the values which are marked. So we unclick these two. Now we have a new table which is only the Pareto Designs which has been selected from the design table. Now we can basically export the data by using print to file Let's export the Pareto design in document file. Let's see how it looks. So it's a Word file and the designs are exported as a table in a Word file. This can be very useful when you want to uh, create your report for the projects. In this video, we have learned how to set up an optimization project, use Jiton script as solver, create different charts, new charts, bubble charts, parallel coordinate charts, select Pareto designs and export tables to formats that are suitable for us.